on the world news tonight. President Tinumbu departs for Nairobi. President Tinumbu vows to protect returned Benin artifacts. Nigeria fulfills 2023 financial obligation to African Union. Lagos sit at home. Ghani Adam Stanley warns Simon Epa to desist from action. And on sport, Nigeria stripped off gold in women's relay for doping. I am Maurire Rabila Lawa, the news shortly. President Bola Tinumbu has departed Nigeria for Nairobi, Kenya for the fifth mid-year coordination meeting of the African Union, AU. Information report that the meeting will take place on Sunday, July 16. The president left Abuja from the presidential wing of Inam the Azikiwe International Airport, accompanied by his chief of staff, Femi Batabia Mila, and Dele Alake, his special advisor on special duties, communication, and strategy. The president Tinubu is attending the meeting, both as a Nigerian leader, as well as a new chairman of ECOWAS, one of the right regional economic communities, Rex. He is expected to present a report on the status of regional integration in ECOWAS, highlighting actions carried out during the period under review by ECOWAS institutions, member states, the private sector, and other stakeholders to deepen integration through three free movements of persons, investment promotion, infrastructure development, peace, security, and stability. The meeting, which has a team acceleration of African continental free trade area, Implementation brings together the Bureau of the AU Assembly, comprising the head of state and government from Comoros, Botswana, Burundi, and Senegal, as well as the leaders of the eight RECs. As made known in Friday's statement by presidential spokesman Dele Alake, the president is expected back in the country at the end of the meeting. Moving on to the next story. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has expressed commitment to protect Bini artifacts which were recovered from different parts of the world as a way of archiving the history of the people. This was made known in a statement by Dele Alake, the special advisor to the president on special duties, communications, and strategy. Speaking when he received the Oba of Benin, Omo Oba Ed Nedo Oko Okolokolo Ewari II, and other traditional rulers from Edo State, the president assured them that his administration would support the Benin Royal Council in its bid to establish a museum that will house the artifacts. The president congratulated the Benin monarch for the retrieval of the stolen artifact, commending his efforts in ensuring that a befitting museum is built to archive the rich history and tradition of Benin Kingdom. President Bola Tinubu said the federal government is currently undertaking an audit of its infrastructure project, promising to ensure that roads in Edo State are considered in line with the request made by the traditional ruler. In his address, Oba Ewari II commended President Tinubu for the giant strides of his administration within its first weeks. We have predicted that you would eat the ground running and you have done so, even faster than we thought, the royal father said. He said the steps taken by President Tinubu since his inauguration on May 29, 2023, are renewed the hope of Nigerians and put the country on the path of progress and development. Nigeria has fulfilled its financial obligations to the African Union by making full payment of its assessed contributions for the year 2023. The confirmation was made on Saturday by Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Adamu Ibrahim Lamua, on the sidelines of the 43rd Ordinary Session of the Executive Council of the AU in Nairobi, Kenya. Ambassador Lamua, in a segment issued by the State House Director of Information, Abiodun Oladujoye, explained that the payments demonstrated Nigeria's commitment to its responsibility as an AU member state. He praised President Bola Tinumbu for living up to expectations, not only as a chairperson of ECOWAS, but also as a president who emphasized prompt payment of financial assessments. During the executive meeting, the permanent secretary shared Nigeria's stance on the proposed 2024 budget of the AU. He welcomed the consideration of the economic outlook of African countries 
and the execution rates of AU departments and organs over the past three years in the budget drafting process. Nigeria emphasized the importance of an austerity-driven resort oriented budget that avoids duplication. Accountability and prudent resources management were also highlighted to encourage other member countries to fulfill their financial obligations, he said. The Permanent Secretary called for synergy and complementary uh, I beg your pardon, and complementarity among AU organs and departments and requested that the AU Commission AUC reduce travel costs by hosting more meetings at its headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. He also stressed the need for compliance with internal audit processes to ensure transparency and accountability. Moving on to Lagos, the area of I beg your pardon, the area on the Kakan 4 of Yoruba land, Iba Gani Adams, has warned Simon Epra, factional leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, to stop plans to stage the sit at home protest in Lagos State. Epra had said the sit at home protest currently being enforced in the southeast will be done in Lagos State. According to him, the sit at home is part of actions to demand the release of Inamdi Kanu. But in reaction to Epra's claims, Gani Adams cautioned the Finnish based ethnic propagandist. The disease from repeating the mystic of the 1970s had dropped the move. He maintained that the seat at home was uncalled for and counterproductive. Adams also warned that the Southwest is not part of Biafra Republic and as such it was preposterous for outsiders to dictate or impose their agenda on people of other regions who they cohabit with as residents. He should not try that. The Southwest is not a Republic of Biafra. Any attempt to impose the Biafran's Republic agenda will be resisted. It should desist from repeating the mistake of the 1970s. It should be very, very careful. They are entitled to their opinion, but Southwest is not Biafran region. It should be very, very careful. Gami warned Epa. Moving on to the next story from Oyo State. Oyo State government has the bunk report of the cholera outbreak in some parts of the state. Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Dr. Olu Soji Adeyoju, who stated this yesterday, said a medical team had been put on a lot to prevent unforeseen circumstances. Surveillance and notification officers in the state and local government have been put on a lot to institute preventive measures and sensitization of residents in markets and other places with a view to responding to any outbreak of such disease in the state. This disease is suspected to be highly contagious. It is an infection that may be transmitted from person to person through various channels, most especially where the source of drinking water and foods are polluted or contaminated. Our people at the ministry are currently on the field, synthesizing the masses on how to prevent cholera, he said. Adenio Ju will implore residents of the state to improve on their personal hygiene and abide by disease preventive measures, urge people not to drink water from doubtful sources and avoid eating food prepared in non-hygienic environments. Moving on to Edo State. Following the failure of the Edo State government revenue collection, the state governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, has commended and commanded that all revenue collection services of the government be placed under the direct control of his office. It should be noted that at the end of June 2023, the governor's office assessed the government's year to date revenue status, which revealed that earnings fell short of 30 billion naira targets. On account of that, according to a statement signed by Crusoe Osage, Special Advisor, Media Project, the governor has queried all permanent secretaries and heads of revenue generating agencies within the government, including the local government areas, who have not met their mid year target. The governor has ordered that they are now to come under the direct supervision of the governor's office to ensure the attainment of 62 billion naira targets at the end of the year. From Edo State to Katsina, Governor Diko Omaru Rider's Chief of Staff, Jabiru Sauri, has claimed to narrowly escape the harrowing assault from suspected customs service officers at a location known as Gora Yamama while on his way to Abuja, Erut Kaduna, on Thursday, July 13, 2023. Chief Press Secretary to Katsina Governor Ibrahim Kaula Mohammed disclosed this in a statement yesterday. Javi resulted in the hands of suspected custom officers, as narrated in the statement reads. Kastina State, Nigeria, and added Javi Ali, the esteemed chief of staff to the governor of Kastina State, had a narrow escape from an arrow in assault from custom service officers on Thursday, July 13, 2023, 
The custom targeted him as he was departing Kastina on his way to Kaduna and ultimately Abuja at a location known as Goro Yamama. According to Mr. Saori, while en route to Kaduna, he and his driver encountered a recent accident near the Goro Yamama highway area, leading to significant traffic congestion. Once their car was finally able to move away from the accident site, the assailants had no firearms, targeted their vehicle, firing short at the tires and body of the car in an attempt to arm Mr. Saori. However, thanks to quick thinking and courageous actions of his driver, they managed to speed away to safety in a nearby town. Reflecting on the traumatic incident, Mr. Saori shared, I was overwhelmed by fear, contemplating the possibility that this assailant intended to cause me harm while I carried out my duties. If not for the bravery and resourcefulness of my driver, the outcome could have been far more dire. From Kassina to Jigawa States, operatives of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps NCDC, Jigawa State Command have arrested two suspects over possessions of counterfeit United States dollars, 30,900 US dollar. The spokesperson of the command, CSC Ademu, said that these while parading the suspect on Friday at the command headquarters, Ditse, the state capital. The suspects are 25 years old, Dan Nadi Umer of Tashir Musawa, Zaria LGA, Kaduna State, and 35 years Abdurrahman Khalid. According to him, the suspects were arrested when one Dan Nadi Umer lodged a complaint that one Abdurrahman Khalid deceived and defrauded him by linking him up with one man who collected a sum of 147500 to provide him a local charm. He said the letter owned up to allegation but claimed that Dan Nadi met him with fake currency and asked him how to spend it without any itch which he told him that he knew one man named Aruna who lives in Unguru Yobe State that would help him turn the fake currency into genuine cash. However, the alleged man could not be reached for days via his phone. So Dan Nadi suspected foul play and reported the case to the NSCDC Divisional Office in Sule Ankara, LGA. Dan Nadi later confessed that he bought the fake currency from one Zachary now at large in Mararavajos, Kaduna State and purchased the three fake bundles of 10,000 US dollars at the rate of 75,000 naira. CSC Adamu said the cash in dollar, which is about 24 million naira, at the Investors and Exports Foreign Exchange window was recovered from the suspect. He said the case of counterfeiting and criminal conspiracy is contrary to Section 369 and 96 of the Constitution and punishable under Section 329 and 97 of the Panel Code Law of Jigawa States. From Jigawa's story, we go to the foreign from Seychelles. Vice President Ahmed Afif of Seychelles has confirmed his country's decision to impose far reaching restrictions on Nigerians seeking to travel to the West Indian Ocean country. Mr. Afib said his Seychelles immigration authorities had been instructed to permit Nigerians with diplomatic passports and residential permit access into the country. Nigerians seeking to enter Seychelles as tourists or new immigrants have been banned indefinitely, the vice president said, according to Seychelles news agency. Mr. Afib said his country was able to link Nigerians to numerous criminal activities, especially drug trafficking and online fraud syndicates. We have seen a clear link between these with certain people from Nigeria. In the past two weeks, for example, 13 people coming from Nigeria have been arrested when entering Seychelles because they were carrying drugs into the country, Mr. Afif said, per Seychelles News Agency. In one case, 62 Nigerians who said they were on holiday used false credit card and the money was never credited to the account of these establishments. Mr. Afif's comments came days after controversy broke out on social media after some Nigerians alleged being denied visas for no terrible reasons by Seychelles. Nigeria has faced visa bans from other countries in recent months, including the United Arab Emirates, which added the West African nation to a list of 17 African countries not welcome in their country. And to end the world news is a sports story. The Commonwealth Games Federation, CGF, has stripped Nigeria of the gold medal won in the women's 4,000 by 100 meters event at Birmingham 2022. The quartet of Toby Amosu, Favor of Philly, Rosemary Chukuma, and Grace Mwakocha claimed gold in the race meters raised during last year's Commonwealth Games. Mwakocha will run the ankle leg for Nigeria, however, failed a doping test during the competition after ostrotarin and liquid draw were found in a sample A urine. Consequently, the Athletics Integrity Unit, AIU, 
handed her a provisional suspension, banning her from the sports. In a statement on Friday, the CJF disclosed that Commonwealth Games Federation Corp has disqualified Kocha and nullified all the results involving her in the competition. The Commonwealth Games Federation can confirm that the Commonwealth Games Federation Corp has issued their decision regarding an in-competition sample provided by Ms. Kocha who competed in athletics at the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. The statement reads, Analysis of the sample return and adverse analytical finding for austerin and the same metabolite of Lingridol. Both are non-specified substances listed under other anabolic agents in the WADA 2022 Pro-EBT Act. With a sports story, we have come to the end of the World News this Hour. Before we go, some headlines. President Tinubu departs for Nairobi. We're also brought to you, President Tinubu vows to protect returned Benin artifacts. Nigeria fulfills 2023 financial obligations to African Union. Lagos sits at home. Ghani Adams sternly warns Simon Epa. And on sport, Nigeria is stripped of gold in women's relay for doping. For more updates of our broadcast on YouTube, our annual is BGI TV Current. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell. Select option all to access all of our broadcasts. On Facebook, Bagede Imo with Alawiye Adibayo. Please like and follow the page. For advert placement of your goods and services, coverage of events and functions, please dial the phone number streaming on your screen for advert placements only. Thank you for watching. I am Mo Revila Lawa. Good evening.